My name is Carrie Rose, and it's a joy to present to you this video and nature concert called Breathing in Water. All of these videos are next to water, on top of water, or in water. Being near water has such an impact on frame of mind, so I'm curious how a whole concert featuring it will impact us. I've done several of these concerts outdoors in nature, and each one becomes more collaborative. It's fun to bring creative friends into these situations. We solve problems together, stabilizing music stands using stakes and bungees, figuring out how to fasten music to a kayak. We complain, waiting for leaf blowers to stop and wondering whether that loudest kid in the world is walking away from us or towards us. We wonder at the moon rising over a lake and an owl calling and landing above us with a rustling swoosh. Each piece is filmed on location in a different natural setting. No green screens or MTV flute syncing. These are through takes like a live performance. The recordings are far from perfect, but that wasn't the point. Thanks to musical collaborators Chris McFarlane, Lisa Chella, and Suyi Lee for being so gracious and game to play in these non-traditional and often uncomfortable settings. Thanks to Anne Bernou for the idea to play in her kayak, Calypso, and for filming with a fun-loving, adventurous attitude. Thanks to Liz Donaldson for lending her keyboard. Thanks to Sadie Lees for her willingness to be the beaver in the lake, if it had been a couple degrees warmer. Thanks to Scott Higgs for his artistic input. And thanks to the crickets, birds, owls, and water drops that added their voices too. While you're watching, you can have the best experience in full screen by pressing the square at the lower right on the video. You can set the quality on HD by pressing the settings wheel and changing the quality to 1080p HD. And I suggest headphones or good speakers. If you would like to make a donation, there's a link in the information below the video, but, but that is optional. Most of all, I'm really glad you're here. May the nature and music in this concert water your seeds of joy. The Sonata in E minor by Johann Sebastian Bach is truly a duo that is virtuosic for both flute and piano. There are plenty of dense intertwining lines and counterpoint, and tons of E, ma e minor pathos. He will, here we will play the first and second movements, Adagio, Ma Non Tanto, and Allegro. They are thick, dark, and chocolatey. This is filmed with Suyi Lee on keyboard in Durwood, Maryland, next to Lake Needwood, at the beginning of the D.C. area's Rock Creek Trail.
Last year, in 2022, I wrote this piece, Owls, for alto flute and owl sounds, and this YouTube premiere will be its world premiere. The recordings of owls were found at online sources Pond5 and Freesound. On Freesound, there were some wonderful sounds, and one was, I think, just a guy going, who, who. I guess we all need attention. But I think in this piece I have all real owl sounds. In order of appearance, there are barred owls, screech owls, evil owls, scops owls, tawny owls, barn owls, gray owls, and ural owls. When we hear an owl, suddenly the space is magical. Some calls are round and smooth like polished stones. Some have bending tones that shrug off notation and enter the wild space between pitches. This is filmed at Northwest Branch Park in Silver Spring, Maryland. Shortly before filming, two barred owls were calling over the recording site.
And here I'm on the swinging bridge at Patapsco. Pièce was composed in 1936 by neoclassical composer Jacques Hibert and was premiered by the famous flutist and pedagogue Marcel Moïse. A born composer, while learning piano pieces as a child, Hubert would throw in wrong chords just to see what they would sound like. He did not compose in any one style, and this work has a light, wandering, improvisatory feel. To me, the piece seems watery and relaxed, with occasional turbulence, like floating in a boat. This recording was made in Darnstown, Maryland, on the CNO Canal near Violette's Lock, with the help of Anne Bernou. An enthusiast for these musical videos in nature, Anne had the idea of playing in her kayak, Calypso, and together we figured out how that would even work. We piqued the interest of people on the towpath that morning. Since the kayak was drifting freely, there were a number of takes where the current and wind drove the kayak into the weeds, leaving me playing while facing away from the camera for much of the piece. Or the kayak lingered far away for a while, zoomed past the camera with a gust of wind, and then lingered far away on the other side for another couple minutes. But here we lucked out or we were persistent enough and with cold fingers but giddy spirits, we finally got a good one. And what an adventure. As I feel after many of these recordings, I can't believe this worked out. Hello. Oh, that's cool. <laughs>
This piece is Lake for Two Flutes by Lei Liang. It is filmed with Lisa Cella, flutist, at Lake Frank in Rockville, Maryland. Her daughter, Sadie Lise, was with us and would have been the beaver in the lake if it had been a little warmer. Lei Liang writes of the piece, on a visit to a Buddhist monastery in the evening, while walking alone by the side of the lake, I caught the sight of a V shape floating and extending on the surface of the water. It was a beaver taking a swim under the moon. Now, on the surface of silence, the flutes inscribe their markings with sounds, not unlike what the beaver did on the surface of the lake.
want me to start the water? Brazilian composer Hector Villa-Lobos had very little formal training, but learned from observing his father's musical gatherings. He played with Brazilian street bands in the cinema and theater, absorbed tangos and polkas, and for a brief time he was cellist in an opera company. So his musical experiences fused Western classical music and Brazilian traditional music. He explored Brazilian traditional music in expeditions to the jungles, but stories of capture by cannibals are seriously doubted. Villa Lobos wrote nine Bacchianas Brasileiras. The name fuses Bach and Brazil and applies compositional techniques of Bach to the traditional lyrical song and dance energy of Brazilian music. For example, you can hear plenty of sequences, Bach's technique of repeating melodic fragments higher and higher or lower and lower. Bacchianus Brasileris No. 6 was written for flute and bassoon in 1938. The two movement titles, Aria and Fantasia, also refer to the music of Bach. The subtitle for the first movement is Choro, which means to weep or cry and is a type of free, improvisatory, contrapuntal, and often dissonant music played by Brazilian street musicians. This piece was filmed with, with Chris McFarlane on bassoon in Washington, D.C.'s Georgetown at Dumberton Oaks Park. Several of the surrounding embassies were taking advantage of a warmish December day to operate their leaf blowers but we usually drowned them out. The park has a mossy stream and stone structures that lend a romantic, forgotten feel.
The Romanian composer George Enesco was a child prodigy. He wrote a substantial violin and piano piece at age five. He was admitted to the Vienna Conservatory at age seven and was the youngest ever to enter. He gave a concert at the court of Vienna at age 10 for the emperor. He is often considered a French composer because he moved to Paris at age 14 and met his major influences, Faure and Massenet. Cantabile in Presto was written in 1904 and was an examination piece with a slow and expressive first movement and a fast virtuosic second movement. It starts with rich creamy flute low register and then light frothy long phrases melt in your mouth. This is filmed with Suyi Lee on keyboard in Durwood, Maryland, next to Lake Needwood, at the beginning of the DC area's Rock Creek Trail.
Thank you for being here. Playing and adventuring for you has been fun. Thanks to musical collaborators Chris McFarlane, Lisa Chella, and Suyi Lee for being so gracious and game to play in these non-traditional settings, which were often uncomfortable. Thanks to Anne Bernou for the idea to play in her kayak, Calypso, and for filming with such an adventurous attitude. Thanks to Liz Donaldson for lending her keyboard. Thanks to Sadie Lease for her help wielding stakes and bungees. Thanks to Scott Higgs for his artistic input. And thanks to crickets, birds, owls, and water drops that added their voices too. Donation information is below, but mostly I'm just really glad that you're here. I hope that this concert was a drink of fresh water for you.